He threw a leg across that iron horse and pulled the throttle down. A million things rushing through his mind like that rumbling sound. Living life in his own eyes, direction isn't clear. So searching, searching all these years. Welcome to Answers from Mars Hill. This is Pastor Ski of the Russian Wind Biker Church, and I want to welcome you to this week's uh, this week's program. Uh, last week we uh, we finished uh, a conversation. I think it was two or three weeks on the end of the world. And uh, if you get a chance, maybe you'll look back at uh, last week's or the last couple weeks, and um, and see uh, the compelling discussions we had about are we living in the end days? Uh, what's going on? Uh, last week I think uh, I spoke about how the Christians are going to be tremendously persecuted uh, near the end, and also the um, Devol de de evolution of uh, of humanity, which is um, is something that is obviously happening uh, in our day and age. Um, you know, this has been a crazy week. We had our um, our president and first lady have come down with this new uh, coronavirus that we've been uh, you know wrestling with for geez about six, six seven months now, and uh, you know sent a shockwave. To, uh, to the world, but uh, you know, thank God, he's, he looks like he's going to be getting out. You know, maybe, maybe t uh, today, maybe yesterday. Um, I'm not sure exactly at this point, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting to see. And you know, I, I've been speaking the last couple of weeks about how I see this this great spiritual war that's going on uh, for our country, our country in particular, but the world in general, and. Uh, and just how, how evil things have gotten that, you know, here are uh, a husband and wife who come down with, you know, something that has been uh, feared for, uh, for basically everyone in the, in the world. And, um, and, and the other side is, is just vicious. And, you know, you get the impression they'd be just happy if these two people die. And it, it, to me, it, it just shows... The heightened spiritual tension, and uh, you know the uh, the forces of good and the forces of evil, or, or whatever, and we see the uh, the one side is getting very, very uh, I mean, just evil, you know. And you know, I was thinking back the eight years that we had uh, the previous administration, and uh, you know, I'm a conservative Christian, and much of what um, the last administration was about. Um, I'm as diametrically opposed to as these people on the left might be opposed to the, the things that I hold dear and the things that I, um, I would promote, you know. Um, but, but we didn't get crazy, you know. We, uh, we gave honor and respect to our, our president. Um, you know, none of this evil, um, just vile language and doing everything to just illegitimately try to stop him. Um, we didn't do any of that, you know, and it, it's, it's really showing the world, and I hope it's showing people in our country, that uh, hate and anger and animosity is not something we should be motivated to do. You know, we can uh, have civil discourse and, um, you know, talk about our differences, and, you know, it's not all about compromising everything. But being able to have a, um, a caring discussion and actually, you know, understanding that the people who are opposed to you are not evil people. They just have different ways of looking at things. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something that I think um, conservatives have been accused, Christians have been accused of just judging and, and just being evil to people. And, and, yeah, there's people who have done that, but that's not really what the Bible says we should do. Um, but I think now we're getting a, a picture of when there's people out there that aren't conservative, they might not be Christian, they might not be people of faith, and they don't have something as a, a filter to be able to uh, understand how to communicate, how to interact when there are things going on that they don't agree with. And all of a sudden it's like, 
they're like, you know, they're animals left let out of a cage, just going going crazy. You know, I, I, I kid with my wife every once in a while when something crazy goes on and we see all this stuff that's happening. Um, you know, there's a scene in the movie Ghostbusters where um, you know, the guy from the, the city tells him to turn off the power grid. And, um, and they turn off the power grid and all of a sudden every dark spiritual thing is released out into the city and this chaos and, you know, uh, looting and turning over cars and, and violence and everything happens and, you know, like here, here we are. And so, you know, I just wish we could find a place to, um, to find peace together. You know, uh, we used to be able to sit at a table and actually have conversations. And um, I want to give a plug to actually my son out in California. He's uh, the president of the Public Relations Association of Los Angeles. And he's put together a forum of um, just so opposed people. Uh, one of the leaders from Black Lives Matters. Uh, one of the leaders from the police, and there's one or two other leaders that are all kind of at odds with each other, and if we pay attention to what's happening in the news and these violent things, these groups hate each other. And so, uh, you know, I just thank God for my son. He's a peacemaker. And so he's creating a forum where these people can sit and they can, uh, they can have dialogue and they can try to figure out between them how they can solve this animosity and this hate that's going on in the world and uh, it's just it boggles the mind that you know for 250 years our country has had you know polarized issues um, difference in thought yes there's been prejudice there's been bias and we still have some of that and you know I mean don't ever think that we have what we had in the 60s because it's not that that doesn't mean it's good it doesn't mean it's right it just means it wasn't what it was and uh, and so, you know, we have to be able to, you know, like, like Martin Luther King Jr. wanted to promote just uh, peaceful demonstrations and dialogue and to make an awareness. And just when it goes all the way up to the political people, to our, our, uh, the people who represent us in the, the Senate and in the House of Representatives and so forth, that are like spewing the most vile, hate-filled, things it um it really shows that there's something bigger than just the human interaction there's a spiritual um, movement that's happening and it's just taking people like a wave into these places because you know I, I know people who think differently than me and they're basically you know they're good people they can be good friends they can be good, you know good associates and and you can go through life and you can have you know some social circles with people but now um, a lot of that is, you know, people are losing friends over just, they disagree on this one thing. And, uh, you know, life, lifetime friendships, you know, it's funny, people are like unfriending people on Facebook like they're really friends. Like, oh, you're going to break my heart if you unfriend me. Um, but it's crazy. And so I just wanted to, you know, share that. Um, on the other, the other hand, our church is doing very well. I uh, had a powerful service this week. And, uh, you know, God is bringing people together. And, and that's what we try to do in our small corner of the world. And, uh, and that's why there's a lot of good Christian churches out there that are trying to get together in uh, outside forums. And, and so, you know, it's our hope that that can, that can move forward. Uh, but today, today I'm going to share something, um, a, a, a point of reference for our faith of Christianity, why it's different. Um, in a broad sense than really any other philosophy, religion, or spirituality. And uh, I'm going to talk about this phrase, uh, it happened. Something happened. And it's, it's, it makes us different, um, in a way, than people who are followers of other faiths, other spiritualities. And, and people who are really believers in Christ, something happened. And, um, and that's our excuse for being Christian, I guess. Um, but it's, in a way, uh, how we can defend that this is real because we can't explain it. So we come back after our first break. Um, we're going to dig into this topic of uh, something just happened. I'll see you after the break. Hey, everybody. This is Motorcycle Mike, the personal injury lawyer. I've been riding motorcycles my entire adult life. During the course of my 30-year career as a lawyer, I've also represented countless injured motorcyclists. 
If you are one of them, I can be of assistance to you. Go to my website, please, MotorcycleMikeESQ.com. I'll always be there for you. I'm on your side when you ride. Welcome to Wolfman's Bike of the... I'm Kenny the Wolfman Max. And right now I'm going to bring you a brand new jacket in for the ladies. An embroidered jacket. That this hasn't been out yet. This is the first time. The Flying Angel. And the ever popular Brando jacket. It's been around for a hundred years. It will be around for a hundred more. I've got hundreds and hundreds in stock. Don't forget our large selection of sunglasses. I've got all types of jewelry. Ladies biker jewelry. Uh, silver rings. Hundreds of men's rings. We've got it all. Everything is here, right here. Wolfman's Biker Letter, 335 Smithtown Boulevard in Ron Cockerman. My phone number is 631 578 7877. 631 578 7877. Welcome back to Answers to Mars Hill. This is Pastor Ski again. And uh, the topic I want to uh, talk about tonight, again, about this faith of Christianity and why um, it's different. You know, if you're out there and you're not of faith, you know, some people think religions, faiths, you know, they're kind of all the same. Some people say it's the same, you know, different paths to the same God. And, uh, there's a lot of, um, a lot of um, grouping together. Um, you know, I think it was Karl Marx that said uh, religion is the opiate of the people. So he kind of grouped everything into, uh, you know, as the category of, yeah, it's nice, nice for them, makes them feel better. So um, I want to I want to concentrate on really the the core of, of of what's different to somebody who's a Christian. I mean, a true Christian. You know, there's lots of people who go to church, and uh, you know, whether they have real faith or whatever, that's between them and God. But uh, you know, Jesus said we'd be known by our fruit. So that's, uh, that's something just to be aware of. And, uh, and the, the, what I'm going to talk about today is, is uh, the title is really Something Happened. You know, it happened. And, um, and this is the, um, the description of how we defend what we believe. You know, um, the Bible gives an explanation of the Christian faith. Right? It doesn't give it a, a um, it doesn't defend it. It explains it. But within there is the understanding on how, how that defense happens. All right? See, I, I defend this faith because something happened to me through it. And this goes back even to the beginning of, of the church where Jesus said to the, the disciples, wait in the upper room and something's going to happen. And the Holy Spirit shows up. Now, the Holy Spirit is the spirit that Jesus walked with. So in essence, the spirit of Jesus showed up in that room. And, um, and this, um, this moment in time is something that defines every single believer in Jesus Christ as being a Christian who's got a story. Um, the title of this, this, uh, this thought, and actually my, my message Sunday, was from a story in, in Acts where um, Paul is uh, about to be, uh, well, he's, they want to kill him. He went to Jerusalem. He knew that they wanted to kill him, and he, he went anyway because he knew God wanted him there. And so they, they arrested him. They dragged him, and right before he goes into the courthouse, um, he tells uh, the authorities, you know, let me just speak to my people. And so, um, and so Paul turns around and uh, says, uh, let, me, let me give you my defense, why I believe in this Jesus guy and why... Uh, why I believe he's the Messiah. And so um, he doesn't go on to opening up scriptures and 
you know, giving a, um, a detailed theological exposition of what happened. He goes through his life and he explains, you know, I'm a Jew just like you were a Jew. And uh, I was, nobody knew the scriptures better than me. Uh, he says in, uh, in Romans, I believe, maybe in Philippians, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I knew the law. I kept the law. Um, I, I knew the traditions. And he said, I was just going about what I was called to do, what I was led to do by my Jewish faith. And then, it's, I think verse 6 in Acts 22 just says, it starts, uh, it happened. It happened. He said, I, I can't explain it. I'm just going about my day. It happened. And that's the moment when, uh, you know, the, the sky lit up and the, you know, the light went on and uh, Jesus showed up and changed his life. And that's, that's the difference in, um, in our faith. You know, um, many of you have heard us describe this Christian faith as a relationship and not a religion. And that's, um, that's the truth. That's exactly um, what it is. Um, this Jesus shows up. You know, if we, uh, if we have a religion based on, you know, a book and nothing else, well, every other faith has a book. You know, Islam has three books. You know, the Jews have part of this book is their book. And uh, Buddhists have book. And uh, spiritualists have their books. Wiccans have their books. And if, uh, if this is all about a book, then, um, then it's just another, another religion. You know, and even if we take a look at, um, at, at what is the core event of, um, of our faith, you know, Jesus, Son of God, came down to live as a man and uh, walked among us and uh, allowed himself to be tortured and beaten and crucified and killed, put on a cross, and, uh, and then three days later walked out of the grave. And if, um, if that's just it, if that's the whole explanation of our, our, our faith story, then we're just another religion, and, and Jesus can be looked at as almost like a cult hero that we follow. But the core difference is that Jesus that went through this life, that showed us love and compassion and mercy and healing and uh, deliverance, um, and then we tortured him, we killed him, uh, because... That was too different. You know, we didn't want to be held accountable to all those things that are really great for humanity. And um, put him on the cross, and um, he walked out of the grave three days later so he could um, walk up to you and say, I'm here. I'm here to help. I'm here to help you through life. I'm here, I'm here to help you find joy in this life, to find uh, peace, to find purpose. And there's an encounter that happens. You know, the Bible talks about being born again of the Spirit. And, uh, you know, many denominations don't really talk enough about that moment when Jesus actually invades your life. He shows up. You know, right now there are millions of people in, um, in Iran. It's the fastest growing church in the world, uh, I think, right now, that um, Jesus is showing up in their dreams. See, the difference between Christianity is we're not out there seeking God. I mean, some people do come through that, that path of seeking, and then, you know, they have the encounter, Jesus shows up. Um, but many people, you know, Jesus just comes, finds that one moment that maybe something in their story, something in their past, something you're dealing with right now has opened a door. You know, the Bible says, I knock at the door. And, uh, and sometimes the, um, the worldly walls that are put up around us by this life, every once in a while, um, we allow a little crack to, to appear. Um, a little door opens. And when God's Spirit shows up in that moment, it's uh, something happened. You know, there's a song I brought up in church yesterday. It's called... Um, um, he touched me. He says, He touched me. I know He touched me. And now the joy that fills my soul. Something happened. 
And now I know he touched me and made me whole. And, uh, you know, last night, perfect example. Two men in our church, they started coming not of faith. You know, growing, learning, and, um, and then something happened. And two men, tears running down their eyes because Jesus showed up and touched them. And that's what this faith is all about. You know, I think uh, you know, with the time left in this, this section, I think Bobby has some things he wants to, wants to ask about this particular story. Uh, all right. Well, I have a question, but I don't think there's enough time to get into. Well, we can set it up for the next segment. You want to set it up? Okay, let's do that. All right. So the question today is, Pastor, I have recently had a few small incidents the past few weeks that seem to be much more than a coincidence. I'm starting to feel God is trying to tell me something. Can multiple small events that to some seem meaningless or small coincidences ultimately be God working in small ways rather than one defining moment? And there's also a part two to this question. And also, how can I really try to listen and discern more definely exactly what God is trying to tell me? So uh, maybe let's start the first part of it. You know, the, you know. I'll well, God created us all as individuals. We got individual fingerprints. All right. That's, uh, that's an indication that God has each one of us in mind to be different. We have different DNA. You know, God, God knows the hairs on our head. Well, you guys' heads, not my head. I got no hair. <laughs> but, um, but the thing is, God knows how he can reach out to each person individually. Right? And, and, you know, we get indicators. Some people have the one, bam, and it happens. Right? And uh, I wasn't that guy, by the way. You know, um, that it happened moment for me took a lot of moments for us like, okay, um, that's interesting. And what happens is sometimes it's not, not uh, the one big huge thing, but all of a sudden it's the culmination of things that one day something happens and you realize, oh my God, he's been there all along. And that's the, the moment that it happens. And all of a sudden, the revelation comes in. You know, you, you, you can break out and crying. I've had several times I've just explained God to people, explained through their life how God has been there. And, you know, I mean, some pretty interesting characters, some pretty dangerous people. You know, something happens, and, and they're brought to tears, realizing that the God of the universe just reached into their life individually. So, yeah, it can happen as, a, as kind of an awareness that builds, but it's still the one moment when you realize, looking back and you add everything up, that it explodes into your life, you know, and all of a sudden it becomes, it becomes real. And that's, that's, uh, that's a living Jesus Christ that just revealed that he's actually alive and he's actually speaking to you. That's, that's the big blow your mind thing. You know, if this is God, and this is the Son of God, and this is the Savior of all of humanity, and he is so, so caring about every single person that he would actually meet me in that moment. You know, we think God's too busy. Well, he's God. God can't be too busy. <laughs> you know, he's got more grace. He's got more time. He's got more, more ability to, you know, the, the earth will never be too big. There can't be too many people that God's not involved in everybody's life. But that's, you know, that, that part of the, the question, yes. Sometimes people, you know, and they're, in the moments, they might not be looking at it. But then when they look back, they say, well, that's not a coincidence. That's not a coincidence. This happened. This happened. And then all of a sudden, they put it all together. And the light goes off. You know, I, I even said last night, I was wondering where that phrase came from. We all have heard that, you know, like, I was thinking about something, and all of a sudden, the light went off, and... It's like that light bulb in the cartoon that goes off in somebody's head, above somebody's head. And that was Paul's experience. He was just going about his business, and it says the sky lit up. Brighter, he couldn't see, blinded him. And Jesus showed up. So I think that's the, the, the ultimate light going off. 
You know? Anyway, we'll continue this when we come back from our, our second break. Uh, thank you for tuning in. This is Pastor Ski, and I want to tell you about two books that I've written, uh, The Fear of Life and, uh, and No Sting. Uh, the Fear of Life is my, uh, my journey of faith and how I lived in fear for uh, close to 35 years and how God took me out of it. Uh, no Sting is about my battle with cancer and my, my victory through God over it. And if you're interested in any of these books, go to uh, barnesandnoble.com, uh, amazon.com, and also zoolonpress.com. Go to the bookstore. And again, I want to thank you for your support. Welcome back to Answers to Mars Hill. This is Pastor Ski again. We've been talking about the whole premise of, of what actually is the moment when someone becomes a Christian, the, the reality of it. And um, me and Bob were discussing before the break how some people, you know, they just, they, they have things in their life that, you know, they kind of look back uh, or even in the moment say, well, God might have been in that and God might have been in that. And uh, I've been talking about that moment when everything is revealed that, Jesus showed up and he's real. And how sometimes, you know, and th this is kind of my story that, uh, that Bobby was bringing up. Because, um, you know, I, I had indications. And uh, I was a churchgoer. And, uh, you know, I kind of believed. But from a superficial religious kind of viewpoint, because it was I was supposed to do. And, um, and, yeah, sometimes God comes out of nowhere with no advance warning. And, and, and is there in the right moment, and your heart is open, there's a crack in your worldly armor, and God shows up, and it's a huge, huge thing. It can devastate you. It can bring you to tears just realizing uh, how much God loves you, that there is a God, and that he does love you, and he just showed up in your life. And then there are other people that, you know, it's a culmination of, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. And then there's a breaking point, I guess, where... Everything adds up, and Jesus reveals himself. And it just changes your life in that moment. And then you start looking back, and all of us look back, even people who have that, that moment. They look back, and they say, I never knew that was God that got me out of that. Um, the one that protected me when I don't even know why I'm alive. You know, what I do for a living, uh, I have a lot of people that look back, and they're amazed that they're still alive at this point. So, yeah, it, uh, God works in different ways for each people. Each person, you know, he knows how we need to be approached because he did wire each one of us. So I want to bring Bobby back on the screen. And um, I think. No, oh, we just lost your mic. Yeah. That's weird. Uh, we are still on here. Hold on. Turn Hello. Your... One, there two, one, two. Okay. Wow, that was weird. We're back on. How did that happen? I don't know. It was on me. It was on, uh, you know, the orange thing. Yeah, but you obviously didn't push the button. The, I don't know. The buttons. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So Satan just, doesn't just, want this conversation to go forward. Yeah, wow. That was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So just um, say, all right, so now we're going to bring Bobby back on the screen, and then I'll just do the quick edit. Okay. I'll tell you when, though. So um, I think Bobby has some more, or he wants to go deeper into this question, so I want to bring him back on the screen for a moment. All right. Hold on. Do that again. <laughs> so um, at this point I'd like to bring Bobby back uh, back on the screen and continue our conversation I think he has some thoughts that would bring this or the questioner has some yeah. thoughts that would bring this to a deeper level we actually had a second part of the question so you're talking about how um, the, 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 the person asking the question was starting to have these small you know little events that they're starting to feel too much to be coincidences and God's trying to tell us tell him something so the second part of the question is um, they're looking to understand on uh, how to discern more on what God is really trying to tell them 
So I guess it's small things, but uh, how how could uh, how could they listen more? How could we kind of now that we're uh, realizing that connection mm -hmm. and we're realizing that God is trying to talk to us? How can we now focus or try to be more open into hearing more? You know, so okay. I mean, because that that's great. You know, this is a great point to be. You know, when you start to realize, you know, like you said that uh -huh. uh, that. Something's what? happening here. They're realizing something's happening. How yeah, they something, really... something has just happened. And the, the world has just had a tremor, a major tremor in, in everything about them. And what a lot of people, even Christians, have, 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 they don't understand is, you know, we have this moment where Jesus reveals himself to us and something happens. And what it actually does, it propels us into a life where... Other things can happen, and other things we should experience. Someone who's really walking with God has a lot of it just happened moments. And the whole idea is to walk through, you know, obviously we want to we wanna understand God's will and his word for our life. And if we do that, we walk a path where it brings us in places God wants us to be. And so, you know, um, you'll... you'll uh, You'll be somewhere, and all of a sudden, you'll notice someone you haven't noticed ever before, and all of a sudden, you hear words, and all of a sudden, you know that God puts you there for a reason. Because once you have Jesus in you, you are Jesus to the world. You have his spirit, so you're his hands and feet. And so a lot of times, those it happened moments are it happened that I was supposed to be in that place, and God placed me there because I was finally aware of what he placed me for. And all of a sudden, your purpose and, and your, your, the, the vision for your life starts to materialize right before your eyes because you've been listening to God. And a lot of people, they, they listen to God, but they don't listen with their eyes open because God's constantly surrounding us with things, you know? And, and also, he brings you through stuff, you know? Um, there's unexplainable things. I was saying in church last night, you know, I had my first it happened moment, and Jesus revealed himself to me. And then... Uh, I had a, a motorcycle accident, and I'm laying in the road, and I, I probably should have died. I was bleeding out, but then something happened, and I didn't, and people showed up, and miracles happened, and unexplainable things went on, you know, and then, you know, I'm just going out in business and, and doing life, and all of a sudden, I've got cancer, and then I didn't. <laughs> uh, something happened, and it's not explainable, and... Those are big things. But there are so many times, you know, um, even through my, my, my journey with cancer, and I have a lot of things I went through with that, is, you know, I, it could have been a horrible, a horrible experience, a horrible journey. It was a fight. And um, there is nothing easy. It's, it's one of the hardest things you have to face. But, I mean, I was, you know, I saw delays in things, and there were times that I, I, um, I had to uh, put off getting my port in, and finally the day came, all my numbers were okay. They rushed me in, and... You know, I say, okay, God allowed this to happen, and, and all of a sudden I'm in the waiting room, and then uh, something happened because there was a nurse that's been waiting for someone to speak to her for a couple of years on something of faith, and she felt I was the one to ask. And when you just want to live every moment to find the something happened moments, keep your eyes open. Once you have that first one, um, they'll be all through your life. And so those little things, those God indicators, become much bigger than God indicators. Because number one, it also is, uh, again, proof of the reality of this life, uh, the reality of Jesus working through us. Um, and then in extension, the reality of who Jesus was, eternity and heaven and hell. And when you start to see the, the, uh, the defense, the actual defense of Everything's different, and something is always happening. There is no um, random, like, this is just a God that is the opiate of the people. This is a God that is the prescription for what ails us. Uh, it's the God that actually comes in and changes you. And, and he comes into your life and moves you in a direction where every day is a wonder. And it doesn't matter if you're not feeling well doesn't matter if you've got a disease. It doesn't matter if there's chaos all around you. 
Um, every day can be one of those days where something just happens. And, um, you know, and that song, it just resonated with me, you know, that, that I, I, I didn't sing it last night. You know, God forbid I sing that in, this, in the church. But, um, you know, it's just, uh, he touched me. And now I know. Something happened and now I know. And then you stand in that and you move in accordance with that trust and then something else happens. And those things that were before that added up, they don't just continue to happen. But in the moment, you get the thrill of understanding the dynamic of why that's there, who you can help, why God's put you there. And so it, it's an extraordinary life. And this is what makes this faith distinctive, different. It's why Paul, even before he was a Christian, when he hated Christians, he said, the people of the way. Uh, didn't call them Christians. Didn't call it a religion. He called it a way. Because this movement of Jesus Christ is a way of life. It's not a religion. It's not a spirituality. Um, it's not a philosophy. Although all those things kind of play into kind of the overall dynamic of how it can be looked at. Um, but it's a way of life. It's uh, the Son of God comes into your life and walks with you through life. And uh, he shows us the way. And life is incredible. Life is extraordinary. Um, but it happens in a moment. You know, many people go to church their whole life. And they're just not leaving themselves open. You know, they're kind of believing, but they, they think it's all superficial. This is not superficial. This is not like anything. You know, I fought this for years, you know. Um, really quick, my mother, my mother was, uh, was of a different realm of, of, of uh, Christianity, had all kinds of problems and uh, mental breakdown and, and a lot of dark things in our family. And, um, and if it was ever uh, an it happened moment, my mother was the epitome of the it happened moment. And in one moment in time, she stopped two of the strongest psychotropic drugs that you could get. She was seeing a shrink twice a week. She was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day, and in one day, all gone. Yeah. Now, she did turn into that, that kind of overbearing Christian woman, but what, what happened to her, I could understand that now. But as a kid, I, I didn't want to hear it. You know? But I, I know that in one moment in time, and everyone that knew her, um, that doesn't happen with a religion. It, it doesn't happen with some obscure philosophical uh, thought. Uh, spirituality, you know, these spiritualities is just taking your mind to something to help you forget about life. Uh, Christianity isn't, isn't around to make you forget about life. It's, it's to help you have a great life and a life that might not look that good, but it feels great. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what I got to say up until our last segment where I'm going to give you a little word for the week on uh, something happened. And so I want to thank our sponsors, uh, Motorcycle Mike, Mike Levine, I want to thank Bobby um, with uh, Strong Island Television, Strong Island Entertainment, uh, Kenny the Wolfman Max with uh, Wolfman Leather out in uh, Ronkonkoma, New York. And uh, if you're ever out and about in Long Island, we're at the Rushing Wind Biker Church, 10 Peachtree Court, Holbrook, New York. Our main service is 5.30, hang around 6 o'clock service on Sunday evenings. We have Wednesday night service at 7. And uh, if you like to just talk about the Bible, Friday, 7.30, um, we have a Bible study, Bible discussion. And so if you, uh, anybody out there wants to donate to the cause, wants to help with the expense of this show, you can text uh, GIVE to 631-253-7773. Or you can go to the Russian Wind uh, website, RussianWindBC.org, and you can click the Donate button. Uh, indicate it's for the uh, Answers from Mars Hill television show and not the church. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll have another conversation next week. And uh, send your questions, send your comments to AnswersFromMarsHill at gmail.com. Hey, everybody. This is Motorcycle Mike, the personal injury lawyer. In addition to representing injured motorcyclists for over 30 years now, during that same time, I've represented countless car crash victims and construction workers injured on construction sites. If you need my assistance, go to my website, MotorcycleMikeESQ.com. I will always be there for you.
This is Pastor Ski, and I want to tell you about two books that I've written, uh, The Fear of Life and, uh, and No Sting. Uh, the Fear of Life is my, uh, my journey of faith and how I lived in fear for uh, close to 35 years and how God took me out of it. Uh, no Sting is about my battle with cancer and my, my victory through God over it. And if you're interested in any of these books, go to uh, barnesandnoble.com, uh, amazon.com, and also zoolonpress.com. Go to the bookstore. And again, I want to thank you for your support. Welcome back to Answer Some Morris Hill. This is Pastor Ski again. And um, now let's get into our word for the week. Uh, we've been talking about this, um, this premise that Christianity is, is different than other faith, um, faith distinctives. And, uh, and, and that, moment, that, that difference is that something happens. It's not that we have a, a list of things, we have a book, every faith has a book. But something actually uh, actually happens, and how do we share that? That's actually the defense of Christianity. What what is the one thing we can say that defends this faith as what we believe to be the the only true faith? You know, Peter the apostle tells us, uh, "Why are we afraid if uh, we're just sharing good with people?" Uh, why do we think that it can hurt us? Because we know that God, God has our our best interest in mind, and and so He says we shouldn't be uh, we shouldn't be afraid, but we should always be willing to give a defense for the hope that we have in us, which is this faith in Jesus Christ. Now, what's what's the defense? The defense is not a theological exposition or um, a legal argument. Um, because every kind of belief has a, a legal argument, um, and they have a they have a book, and they have uh, maybe transcendental thought and philosophies and and spiritual things. And so, um, you know, what is the difference, and why does it seem Christianity is the most persecuted, uh, most attacked of all the um, the ways of life? Because that's what this is. You know, Paul, even before he was a, a Christian, he attacked the followers of the way, that way, like a condemning statement. And so um, what makes it a way? And, um, and so as we, uh, as we kind of think about that, number one, if, if there's something that has changed in us, uh, Paul says we should never be ashamed of the gospel. We should never be ashamed to open our mouths. But many Christians have gone into hiding. They, they hide in their silence. They hide in their conformity. And, uh, and the thing is, it's a shame because uh, we should be able to uh, have a discourse and have a defense. But I think most people try and most people think that defense is actually in piling a, a resume of scriptures and verses and, and context. And, and that's an explanation of our faith, but it's really not um, the defense of our faith. And so, you know, the defense of our faith is something happens in the moment that we actually surrender and become a Christian. This started right in the beginning of the church, in the book of Acts, when uh, the first church, you know, they were waiting. Jesus said, uh, wait. And uh, we have problems waiting. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that about us as humans. We, we don't like to wait. And so Jesus said, wait, and I will send you the comforter. Um, the Holy Spirit, which is actually the spirit that dwelt in Jesus while he walked. The Holy Spirit was the spirit of Jesus, and it's clear throughout the scriptures. And so they waited, and then that night, 10 days later, something happened. Um, it happened, what Jesus said. It happened that night, and then the spirit came in, the spirit of Jesus came in. Jesus came in as a mighty rushing wind and wrecked their world, changed everything brought something into each individual life and brought a power in the, the community that was there that has since in 2,000 plus years has never been replicated, never been duplicated by any other thing in the world. The, uh, the power that came when it happened uh, keeps rolling. And, and that's our, our faith is, is individually. See what happened that, that day. It happened corporately, but it also happened to each person individually. 
and we see Paul and we see Stephen and we see people that were part of that first church individually empowered by something happened to them, you know? And, uh, and, and this, this uh, word for the week is, is really empowered by a story in, in the book of Acts where Saul, who would be Paul, was uh, persecuting Christians. And, you know, and then uh, Jesus met him on the road and um, had a revelation and became Paul the apostle. And now he's being tortured, he's being attacked, he's being persecuted by the Jews. And, um, and he, he comes to Jerusalem and everybody's warned, don't go to the Jerusalem because you're going to be killed. They hate you there. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna torture you, they're going to kill you. And Paul said, God, God said to go to Jerusalem, so I'm going. Uh, that's another story for another day. You know, forces try to stop you from doing what God has for you. So, uh, so anyway, um, the Jews are trying to attack him, and the, the, the authorities, the, the Roman authorities, came in, and they um, they, they didn't want drama. They didn't, you know, they didn't want any of these subservient groups causing drama. And so they took Paul away to kind of save him from the Jews at that point. Then they were in the process of arresting him and bringing him in. And before he goes into the courthouse, he says, can I just speak to my people for a moment? And, um, and so Paul turns around and says, uh, my brothers, my, my fathers, my people of, 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 faith, of faith, my, my nation, um, let me say something in my defense. Let me defend myself. Let me show you my defense. And no one knew scripture, the Bible, the, the Torah, more than Paul. But he didn't use any of that. He didn't have a very carefully packaged theological posture to prove his point. What he did is he, he went through his life. He said, well, I was, I was this. I was a zealous Jew. I was, I was the same as you and, you know, even more zealous for our faith. And, and I moved in the faith I was taught by the greatest of our faith and I, I believed in that faith and I was and then uh, I was moving I got up one day and I, I had to go to Damascus because I had to do what the, what my religion and my heart and my God required of me and um, it happened that's his explanation it happened if you look in uh, Acts chapter 22 verse 6 it says as it happened and that's our story of faith it happened he was just going about his, his life as what he was. And yes, he was anti-Christian. Um, he was um, attacking Christians. And that's not you know, everybody's story. Some people are just not out there and they're not aware and they're not, they're not seeking. And there are some that are seeking. And, and so you know, the thing about Jesus is Jesus will meet you in your life when there's a moment that this spiritual armor that the world puts on us. You know, in, the, in the scriptures, we talk about the full armor of God to protect us from the evil one and, and temptation and all these things. Well, the world builds uh, walls around people. And uh, that's dark forces, as I believe. And then sometimes things happen in our life. We could be seeking, we could be not seeking, we could be somewhere, but somewhere there's a crack in that wall that the world has put in. And, and just at that moment, um, Jesus shows up. And it's like a light goes on. Paul said the the sky lit up and it was bright. It was a bright light. And, and I think we can understand that moment when we have this revelation or something comes up and, you know, it's like the light goes on. And Paul's saying, I wasn't looking for this. You know, I was just doing what I do. And then, bam, something happened. Jesus showed up. And that's really a difference in this faith is people who are really really that's why it's talked about born again it's out of jesus's mouth not some fanatical fundamentalist jesus actually said that that something happens and we're we're changed because you can't have an encounter with the living god the messiah and not be changed something happens and that's where true christianity is birthed in people you know, there are too many people that I don't know if they even had that moment. You know, they've gone through their whole life. Maybe they're sitting in church thinking it's a philosophy, thinking it's a religion, and they're thinking they're covering all the bases. And some, sometimes there are arenas that don't tell them, seek God while he can be found. And if you seek him, he will be there. This is all promises that are in the Bible, but people are sitting in churches in different denominations, and they're never told that. 
And that's really the difference in this faith. Without that, it looks like every other faith. You know, because um, we have a book. Everybody's got a book. You know, and, um, and, and we have, a, we have a, an, an icon. You know, and we can have the, uh, the life of Jesus, the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. And if that's where it ends, then it's nothing more than, uh, than another icon and kind of a cult following of someone that was great and did something uh, incredible. The difference is, is when that man walked out of the grave, he walked right into your life. And he walked right up to you when you needed it. And he said, I'm here. I'm here to help. I'm here to stand you back up on your feet. And you may even think your life is good, but you have no clue what I have to show you. The things that you can go through this life, the things that empower you to overcome everything in this life. And that's the difference is there are individual personal encounters. See, God created us as individuals. We got fingerprints. We got DNA. That in itself says that God, God thinks about every person individually, that he would create us with something unique within us. The Bible says he, can, he knows all the hairs in our head. He knows where we've been. He knows where we've gone before the, the, the foundation of the world, that he cares about every one of us. And it boggles the mind to think that the God of creation would actually show up in your world. And, and that's the moment. That's when it happens. It's when something happens. And all I can do is encourage you. Um, you may not be a person of faith. You may have somebody who struggles with faith. Just seek him. And your life will become a series of, it happened again, and it happened again. Something happened. Something happened tomorrow. And, and this is what life is when you're a follower of Jesus, because when you have that first it happened moment, Jesus comes in and just fills you with all kinds of just peace and love and comfort and, and purpose. I think we're all looking for a purpose and a vision for our life. And, and if you walk in it, life becomes something happened, and tomorrow something else happens. You know, I'm looking for it, and then, oh, there, there it is. There's God, and there's God using me, and it happened again. And that's what this is about. This is what separates Christianity is relationship is how we put it, and sometimes you can't grasp that with your concept of God. Jesus comes into our life, walks alongside us, within us, and creates an incredible life. So that's... That's the word for the week. It's Pastor Ski, and that's uh, something to think about, maybe giving you more information about what the followers of the way should be all about. Christianity brings too many thoughts. We're followers of the way. It's a way of life and uh, a way of community. So anyway, thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, again, this is Pastor Ski. Um, earlier I gave you the information. It's on at the end of the show for... Um, if you want to donate to the cause and, and support this show. Uh, also, if you're ever in Long Island, uh, only about a mile from MacArthur Airport, we're in Holbrook at 10 Peachtree Court. And Sunday night, come join our main gathering, 5.30. We kind of have a hang around, 6 o'clock we start. And so thank you for joining me on Answers from Mars Hill. Looking forward to some more conversations. As Paul said on Mars Hill, let us reason together. God bless you all. I'll see you next week.